Hey everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into some of the strangest things people have ever seen others do in public. From bizarre behaviors to outright unbelievable actions. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's get into these wild public encounters. I was stopped at a red light, and there was a lady in the car next to me. She was having really sporadic head movements. Not the head bob dancing type, but just kind of crazy. After like 10 to 15 seconds of this, her neck went limp, and her head just hung forward. The light turned green, and I hesitated a moment, wondering if she needed medical care. I was about to pull in front of her to check on her when her head abruptly jerked back up, and she drove off without hesitation. I used to work the night shift repairing broken down trains. One night I was called out to a train parked up on a siding in the next town. So I went to the job, made the repair, and was sitting in the driver's seat chilling and smoking a cigarette before heading back. Alongside the siding, over a fence, was an industrial estate with a bunch of units. There was one apparently working, and a loading bay door was open. I saw a security guy come out of the door and stand there looking out for a minute or so before he started dancing. The dancing grew into a full-on Michael Jackson-style routine with moonwalks, etc. No music, he maybe had headphones, just this guy dancing away on his own in the night. That was unusual, but sort of okay, but he then stopped dancing, lied down on the floor, and started rolling sideways back and forth. Maybe five times left, five times right. Then he got up and went back in. I can see he got a bit carried away with the music on his headphones or in his head or whatever that led to the dance, but I don't know what the fuck the rolling about was for. I brought my kids to the ocean, long drive, but we started early, and as the kids enjoyed the ocean for the first time, a middle-aged woman wearing a uniform of some kind walked by carrying a large, about the size of a small suitcase, cardboard box. She stopped and stared at my kids. It was odd, so I said, excuse me, ma'am. And she wheeled on me and started shouting in some foreign language. I had no idea what she was saying, but she sounded pissed. She was literally spitting as she yelled at me. My kids noticed and ran back onto the beach. Then she shook this big box at me, and there was a dull thud as whatever was inside banged around. I dashed around her, grabbed my kids by their hands, and jogged away from her. I looked back, and she was still standing there. This was at a state park, so there were no houses anywhere near there. Weird. First, let me say that I think this is strange in an awesome way, not a bad way. There's a man in the city where I live. I don't know what he used to do for a living, but he got injured and is now on disability payments from the government for the rest of his life. He was so grateful to the country, the community, and the people who's taking care of him now that he can't work at his carrier that he went out and bought a bicycle and cleaning supplies, and now he cycles around singing merry songs and wishing everyone a lovely day while going from shop to shop, asking if he'd be allowed to wash their windows as a thank you for his welfare checks. Super strange and super awesome. I've talked to him a few times, and he'll be the first to state proudly that he is, in fact, strange. He just thinks we need more strange people in the world. Like, he'll see someone sitting on a bench just staring at the ground, and he'll bicycle right up to them and ask if they're okay. Look up, my good friend. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and it's a lovely day. He won't pry, he'll just point out some positives and wish you a lovely day before breaking into song as he pedals towards his next shop window. Years ago, I used to work doors as a bouncer. Had one bloke walk up the road towards me well into his cups, one step sideways for every step forward, you know what I mean, spot the pub, spot me, and do the old straight arm march that every bloke does when they are trying to hide their intox level. He marches up to a hand breadth away from me and stares over my shoulder at the door. Evening, sir. I say. No response. Not tonight, sir. I say. He finally looks at me and slurs something like why not. I state the obvious. Ooh, he ain't happy with that. He goes on a full minute tirade about how the world was against him, that every bouncer he's met tonight has been a cunt, and that I was knocking him back because he was Cory, Aboriginal, for Yusepa's readers. As he's ranting, he's shrugging out of his clothes, and by the time he's done, he's stark, bloody naked on one of the busiest streets in the city. He then holds a finger up, like a one-moment kind of gesture, then projectile vomits on his clothes while trying to maintain eye contact with me. Finishes, looks back at me, gives me thesep upwards nod, then strolls down the street stark naked. Reversal, the best place for us as teens on a limited budget was to visit buffet restaurants and stuff as much pizza in our faces as we could. Our favorite place took a long time to clear tables, so we would just move tables after we got seconds. 
This one time, we finished our first plates, went to the buffet, and went straight to the second table. An older couple sat down by our first table while we were getting our seconds. We finished, and as we walked by our first table, I grabbed some food off my original plate, munched on it, and looked at the lady. She was frozen in mid-cringe, horrified. Her eyes were massive. Her mouth was at an odd angle. And she just glared at me. It didn't strike me until after I left that she had no idea that was my plate and just assumed that I was a child monster living on the streets eating other people's slobbery leftovers. I was on the bus heading to grad school one afternoon when this lady got on the bus, her shirt covered in an unknown reddish, brown substance that was on her shirt and caked around her mouth and face. She finds a seat towards the back of the bus, across from where I was sitting, and pulls from a paper bag a half-eaten rotisserie chicken covered in what I thought looked like raspberry jelly. She then reaches into her pants and starts smearing what I can only assume to be her menstrual blood over the chicken. She then proceeds to take a bite from the chicken and lick her fingers clean. It was in Oceanside, California. That marine boot pirate bar. I saw some big dude just start beating the shit out of some boot marine, like bad. I was thinking I was witnessing a murder. It was like 3 p.m. plenty of other marines were there and were just looking like me. Anyway, this boot that was getting his face pounded into the concrete just started waving his hand in defeat. Dude stooped, pounding him. I gave the boot marine a hand up, and they just walked back into that bar together like it was nothing. Blood was still on the streets, and everyone just carried on like it was normal. I think it was just kind of normal, which made it such an unreliable memory. Especially for 3 p.m. no cops showed up, I believe I was just getting out of the movie theater and getting my hair cut. But nobody really said anything. Me and my friends were kind of shocked, but we wanted to get in line for the haircuts before other dumb marines did the same. I saw a kid take a shit in a ditch at the park once. I was on a bench, and the kid, maybe 9 or 10, looked around suspiciously and hopped in the ditch. From where I was sitting, I couldn't see any of his lower body while he was in the ditch. He then ducks down in the ditch and all I can see is the top of his head for about 5 minutes. He then hops back up and climbs out of the ditch, still looking around to see if anybody has noticed him. I pretended not to see him and looked down at my phone. Out of curiosity, I casually walked over to the ditch he had been in just to see what he was being so secretive about. I look in the ditch, and, lo and behold, there are two fresh, humongous turds with some leaves and grass brushed over them in a terrible attempt to cover up the evidence. The park didn't have a toilet, so I assume the kid just decided to let loose there. It was the grossest shit I'd ever seen, both figuratively and literally. Years ago, I came home to find a guy who was my best friend in high school sitting on my couch drinking a beer. I hadn't seen him in probably 7 of 8 years. He said hi and offered me $250 to crash at my place for the weekend. After a lot of questions, none of which got answered, I might add, he gave me $400, and I stayed in a hotel for a couple of nights. I came home to a spotless apartment and a fridge full of beer. I haven't seen him since. I tried to look him up on Facebook and ask around about him, but he seemed to have dropped off the grid. I'm assuming he'd either become a drug dealer or work for a government agency I don't want to know about. Neither would really surprise me. If you're reading this, bro, say hi. I'm pretty sure I witnessed an abduction when I was a senior in high school. I was driving home, and I saw a man holding a boy's arm. The boy was kicking, punching, flailing, and crying. I drove past it, thinking it was just a kid who got into trouble and his dad. Two suburban blocks later, it dawned on me that I might have driven past a crime in progress. I did a quick K turn and went back. They were gone. It was only 30 seconds. I scanned the surrounding block, and there was no trace of them. There's absolutely no way the dad would have rushed the kid inside a home or car in those 30 seconds. The only way would be if he picked him up and ran with him. I watched a lady stop her car on a train crossing as the train was coming, like 50 miles per hour or something. It took, like, a mile or more to stop. We looked at each other as it impacted, facing probably about 20 feet away as the train came and blasted her to smithereens. The fucking head exploded. I was 10, delivering papers. I wobbled my bike home, bawling. I was the only one who knew why the train stopped. Well, me and the engineer. And the lady, but she didn't count anymore. My elder twin sister told me I peed my pants. I don't quite remember that, but she was mad because she had to climb under the train to finish my paper route at my mother's insistence. It turns out that the lady killed herself. The strangest thing I've ever seen. In high school, we went to a Remembrance Day, Veterans Day in the US, ceremony downtown. I don't remember much of the ceremony, but it was freezing outside, and Trudeau spoke. 
When we were walking back to the buses, we walked past a group of furries. Looking back, it was disrespectful to have a furry convention on a day meant to remember the sacrifices soldiers made for the country so that we could have freedom. Also, when I went to Starbucks, a crackhead asked me to buy her a drink. I did, so she'd leave me alone. She wanted to meet my dad and wanted to introduce me to her boyfriend. I lied and said I needed to catch my bus. When I lived in NWDC, right across the street from Howard Theater, for anyone familiar with DC, I was heading out the door at about 7 a.m. to head to the bus stop to go to work. And on my block, I saw a man on the other side of the street, dressed in a full suit, walking, well, sort of waddling down the sidewalk. He seemed to be pouring out a water bottle in front of him as he walked or waddled down the road. It was odd because there wasn't a continuous stream of water coming out of this bottle. It was at that moment that I realized this guy was taking a piss while he was casually walking around the block. I guess he thought that looked less obvious than doing it in one spot. He had to have ruined his dress shoes that morning. Not strange to me but to others, my donkey getting field castrated on my back lawn, in plain sight of morning rush hour drivers around 7.30 am on a Monday. I can imagine the looks on people's faces driving by, and I still laugh about it. Backstory, we bought a donkey a couple years ago to help keep coyotes from our horse herd. He was not yet gelded, castrated, and was about 5 years of age. He needed to be castrated before I could put him in with the herd. What many people don't know about the castration slash gelding process is that it is almost always done on site, not at the vet clinic, with the animal under light sedation with a pain blocker. Usually, a vet and a vet tech are doing this. In my situation, there was no vet tech available, so two vets were sent from the clinic. Both vets are male. Now, before the castration happens and after the sedation sets in, they have to sterilize the area for incision. This means laying the donkey down on his side and having one person hold the back legs apart while the other rubs the donkey's junk with Provadon iodine solution. So I have two guys holding my donkey down and one rubbing his junk in my backyard. With cars driving by. I used to ride the buses to get to work, and on the express bus to and from downtown, this one guy would talk to himself in different voices. Usually he did entire television shows, like the $10,000 Pyramid, where he voiced the announcer, the host, and three contestants. Another time he did the news, where he voiced several different news anchors, did the sports, and traffic the whole bit. The first time I ever heard this guy, he was arguing with himself about a voice message on the phone in two different voices. It was really convincing because I really thought it was two people arguing, their argument got pretty intense, so I looked around for the source, and it was just this one guy. So I was in London with my family, went on to a bus, and a guy with a wheelchair came in looking like he just got out of the hospital. After being situated, the bus began to go to its next stop. This man proceeded to piss himself, and it was a long piss. The whole floor began to be spread out with his piss as he stared at everyone, smiling. I've never seen so much piss in my life. The most shocking part was how all the people in the bus were ignoring what was going on, just kind of ignoring the situation as a whole. My family and I immediately left the bus at the next stop, trying to avoid any piss. My biggest one was actually two things that are mostly memorable because I saw them within three or four minutes of each other. So it was a really snowy day in a really dense city I lived in for school for a bit, and early in the morning, there was snow all over the sidewalk and ice all over the place. While I'm walking down the street, this 50-year-old man walks by in full business attire and a coat, balling a large snowball in his hands and staring straight ahead with an extremely stern and focused expression, like he was a hitman on his way to assassinate someone with it. Then, literally on the next block, I saw this 20-something-year-old struggling to carry seven different mannequin heads with various haircuts down the sidewalk. I bet you it was just a student barber trying to deliver a school project to or from home, or maybe worked for some clothing store, but I have no idea. And because of the ice, it was almost like a cartoon how much he was slipping around and trying to balance all the heads in his arms at the same time. I was on the opposite side of the street, so I couldn't help, but I was constantly sure he was one second away from falling over or at least dropping them all on the ground, but he just kept going like a trooper. So, I work in a game shop in the UK, in a city. We get all kinds of characters in the shop, as one might suspect. Well, one day this guy came storming in, and in front of the tills, we had a little bay of games we were promoting. So, he storms in, picks up one of the PS4 Call of Duty Black Ops 4 boxes, puts that one down, picks up the same game on Xbox One, licks the box from bottom to top, and then storms out of the shop again. It took me a minute to process what the fuck I had just seen. What made the situation funnier was that some poor kid was in with his parents, 
and he witnessed the whole thing too, and the look on his face set me off. Bizarre. I was reading in the park, and on a few benches over there was a young blind woman with a suitcase, cane, and those big blackout sunglasses. She was displaying a sign that read, is anyone wearing a green hat? A few minutes after I first noticed her, I looked back over, and there were four people gathered around her bench, two of whom were, sure enough, wearing green hats, the other two were wearing hats that weren't green. The group was having an animated conversation, and then the blind woman felt their hats with her hands. She then pointed to the two people who were wearing green hats, and all four people gave her a round of applause and walked away. After they were well out of sight, the blind woman took off her glasses, put them and the cane in her suitcase, and walked off while reading her phone. In 1983 I was about 12 years old, and I remember living in Mexico City. I used to live on the seventh level of a nine-story building. From my room's window, a parking lot could be seen completely. In that parking lot, people used to leave their cars and go do their business and come back hours later, then pay for the time. Well, once I woke up about 8 a.m., I looked through the window and there were two cars with about seven to eight guys wearing suits and sunshades. They were smoking and talking to each other like businessmen, but the place was incompatible. I mean, the parking lot wasn't even paved, just compacted soil. Hours later, a young guy, maybe 28 years old, wearing a plaid flannel entered the building in front of that parking lot. As soon as that guy entered the building, all these men wearing shades and suits opened their cars as trunks and got, maybe M1, rifles. They ran toward the place the young guy entered, and a massive shooting started. A lot of shots were fired. All passers-by fled the place terrorized. After the shooting ended, one of the men exited from the building with three rifles in his hands, followed by two guys dragging from legs the dead young guy's body covered in blood. They crossed the street, dragging the dead body, and the dead's head was bouncing against the pavement and sidewalk. They entered the parking lot and dropped the dead body into the trunk and the rifles in the other trunk. They left the parking lot, and one of them threw crumpled bills at the parking lot's toll booth, while the cashier was hidden and panicked. Who was the young guy killed by? Well, newspapers of the next day talk about the killing of LC 23S, Liga Comunista 23 de Septiembre, Communist League Sep 23rd. The September 23rd Communist League was a Marxist military political organization that clandestinely fought for the creation of a revolutionary party and army for the seizure of the political power of the proletariat, the socialist revolution, and the establishment of communism at the international level. These seven to eight guys killed an allegedly commie leader. That was surrealistic, from the guy dragging the dead body from legs toward the car's trunk while his head was bouncing on the ground to the guy lashing the bills to the toll booth. I was driving to work around 7 a.m. when it happened. I have to drive into the city from farmland, so there are lots of big empty fields and then occasional clusters of houses. As I was passing through a small group of houses situated next to a big field, I saw a man jump over the fence from the empty field into the road and start running towards my oncoming car. He was chasing something small and gray, which was moving sporadically. As I got closer, I was starting to slow down, I realized he was completely naked and covered in dark marks. I found out he was chasing a plastic bag that was blowing in the wind. I got about three car lengths away from him just as he caught up to the bag, snatched it out of the air, and leapt into the tree line on my side of the road. I saw his bare ass disappear last. I got close enough to realize three things. One, he was completely naked, except for a tiny brown square loincloth covering his nethers, his ass was wild and free though, and flapping in the wind as he ran. It seemed to be tied to his waist with a thin cord. Two. Those weren't black marks, he was covered in what looked like tribal pattern tattoos, almost completely head to toe, and three, his hair was almost down to his butt in dreadlocks. The sun hadn't completely risen yet, so it was still a little dark, but I'm pretty sure he was white. And probably out of his goddamn mind. He had toned muscles and looked to be in the mid-30s to early 40s, but the facial hair made it hard to tell. It happened really fast, but time also seemed to slow down, and I got a good look at him. I wasn't the only car on the rod. He actually jumped in front of oncoming cars in both lanes, and there were several cars on both sides. We all slowed down, not knowing what the fuck to do about a buck naked man running down the street at 7 a.m., chasing a plastic bag, and disappearing into the woods. After he disappeared, we all slowly resumed normal speed and went on to our destinations, just wildly confused and wondering if that was even real. Oh, and this was winter, and it was about 30 f that morning. So I don't know what the fuck. Oh man. A year ago, I was in a park drinking beer with one of my friends. Near us, it was a woman totally drunk, she wasn't alone, her kids were here, around 40 years old, 
and the kids were teenagers. Her kids tried for a few minutes to convince the woman to move, otherwise, they could miss the bus. When she finally moved, the kids were struggling to keep her quiet. By the way, when we asked them if we could help, they said no because the bus stop wasn't far away, a hundred meters. Apparently, that wasn't the first time for them. On a bus stop, the woman was loud and agitated, and one guy started to argue with her. We couldn't hear a word, but the guy, who was massive, started to yell at her quite aggressively. And after, like, what a minute. He totally loses control and punches her in the face, and trust me, that was freaking violent. People around jumped to the guy and started to fight with him, around 10 people. He ran away, and some dudes followed him and tried to catch him. Close to the bus stop, you can find a market and a parking lot. When he arrived in the parking lot, he saw a guy who was working and driving a forklift. He jumped to him, pushed him, and stole the forklift. And he tried to crush his assailant with the forklift. You could hear people screaming at him, some guys tried to jump on the forklifts to stop him. The police came rapidly, six cars. When the guy saw the police, he totally froze. Maybe the threatened him, lot of chances. Hopefully, no one gets hurt, well, if you don't consider the drunk lady, and this story happened on my first week in Australia. I'm probably not good at telling stories, but that was totally insane. I work in city transit and bus service as a street level supervisor. I have seen a lot of strange things, but this is a more recent one. I got a call about two women arguing on the bus, and the operator couldn't continue. I responded, and when I arrived, it was two slightly older women, one in an electric wheelchair or scooter and the other ambulatory. The woman in the wheelchair was trying to get off, but the other one, who I quickly found out was her sister, wouldn't let her because of the $5 that was owed. It took a few minutes of convincing to get them off the bus and multiple assurances that the police were on their way. Once off the bus, I turned to help the operator with a wheelchair ramp, only to turn around and find both women fighting. The woman in the electric wheelchair or scooter was on her feet, swinging at her sister. They then grabbed twigs, yes, twigs, and were trying to shank each other. They didn't last long, and I was standing like Chris Pratt in Jurassic World, trying to hold back the velociraptors, going whoa. Once they fully stopped fighting, I grabbed their twig shanks and disposed of them. Of course, that's when the police came. No one was hurt, but it was definitely strange. The ambulatory woman escalated the situation even more with the police, saying she would fight them too. She told me before I got them off the bus how holding up a public bus service was only a misdemeanor since she didn't have a weapon, not true where I am. I should have listened to my instincts then. It was strange for a situation that didn't seem to involve drugs, just $5. It was just how they were. I want to make it clear that it wasn't because one of the women had an electric wheelchair and got up, it was just how it morphed from argument to fight to shanking each other with twigs in mere moments.